Hello, and welcome to the Ecology Community Spotlight. I'm Tony Lee Hazlitt, Communication Specialist with Ecology, the Academy of Modern Applied Psychology. I have a very special guest with us today. I have Jason Dodd, who is from Canada, particularly from Summerside, Prince Edward Island. Jason can often be heard saying, I'm always learning, I'm always developing, and wanting to give back to those around me. He says, dream big, dreams, and pursue them with all that you have got. Hello, Jason. Nice to have you here. Thank you so much for being on our spotlight. How are you doing today? It's so great to be here. Uh, you know, this is just a joy for me because uh, ecology has meant a lot to me over the years, so over the last couple of years for sure. And, you know, just getting to uh, share with people about ecology and how it can help them and what it, you know, what it means to me is, uh, is a fantastic opportunity. So thanks, Tony Lee. Yeah, we were having a little conversation before we hit the live button. And one of the things we were saying is that the reason we would like doing these spotlights is because truly our greatest asset inside of ecology is its membership. Uh, the people are the heart of ecology. And as ecology continues to grow, we do have some exciting things coming down the pipe. But as the leadership team inside of Ecology, we really want to make sure that we don't lose sight of what's truly the most important part of Ecology, which is its members. So mm -hmm. we are thrilled that you're here today. You have been um, inside of Ecology for a while. When did you join Ecology, Jason? I want to say, you know, 2018, probably the summer of 2018, I would say. Okay, so right when it started. Basically, so right, right when it started, right yeah. it started, I was one of the first 100 members I, of the actual, like you know, ecology group, and I think principles. Of Tell us about. Take us. Where were you at? Where was your head at? What inspired you to join ecology? What brought you into the? Yeah. Well, it's it's really interesting. You know, we only have half an hour, and this is a half an hour story. But I'll uh, I'll shorten it for the sake of time. But. You know, I was in a transition in my life. I'd be moved on from a, uh, an organization, from a church. I was working as a pastor and I was moved on from, a, from that role and uh, trying to figure out what the next thing was. Um, was I going to get back into pastoring? Or, you know, was I going to uh, get into some sort of other profession? And uh, I knew I liked to help people. 20 years of it, 20 years of working in that profession, I knew I really liked to help people. So I was, you know, just... I, I think I Googled, I think I Googled life coaching <laughs> and somehow, you know, after a uh, couple of pages in, I, I got to the Udemy courses and took Kane's life coaching course um, and devoured that. I went through it really quickly, took my time in the times where he said, take your time and do the, do the things, uh, do the, do the lessons yourself, you know, make sure this counts for yourself. Took those, those moments to, uh, to pause on that. But I really, Really enjoyed what he was trying to say and the principles he was bringing across and, uh, and thought maybe life coaching was for me. And so from there, you know, there's always an opportunity to join Ecology after taking one of his courses. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been really interesting. It's been an interesting journey uh, since joining Ecology and meeting like-minded people, meeting other people that just like to help people. And uh, it's been awesome. Yeah, wonder wonderful. So Blue Sky... Your Life is the name of your coaching business, yeah. Blue, Blue Sky Your Life Coaching. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing with that. Why Blue Sky Your Life? And can you share with us a little bit about your coaching practice? Because the reality is, in our community, a lot of members join with the ultimate goal of crossing the threshold from being a learning sure. practitioner to actually being an effective helping practitioner, which is something that you're doing. So can yeah. you share with us a little bit about your business? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you know, in, in ecology, I started to get the confidence uh, by doing the triads for sure. Uh, you know, I'll probably talk a little bit about my first triad in, in a minute. Though I was really comfortable talking to people one-on-one -on -one, uh, because of my pastoring experience, just the different principles, the different ways of presenting material. And, you know, it was, um, yeah. So I thought maybe I'll, I'll start a business from this. And so Took another life coaching course, uh, got certified here in Canada, and um, you know was was really happy to do that. Then I just you know couldn't let go of the thought to invest in myself. Um, I I'd, I'd done college. I went to Australia to go to college. And that was the only kind of investment that I'd made in myself. Over you no, know, hung up my shingle, and uh, this is the office that I'm in today. 
Um, you know, I just thought if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it well. I don't want to try to do it from home. Lots of people can do it from home. Lots of people are, are good at uh, doing that. But for me, it, it took me getting out of my space at home and renting an office. I'm so glad I did. But um, yeah, so name Blue Sky Your Life. You know, you, you kind of had that quote and I don't even know where you got that quote from, but I always, <laughs> I always, uh, you know, I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to develop, uh, you know. One, to give back to others is, is one of my core values for sure. Um, but the blue sky part is to dream big dreams and, uh, and pursue those things, you know, with all that I've got. I remember kind of as a teenager and as, uh, as a kid, I'd spend lots of time with my um, lying down on the grass with my, with my back and, you know, just staring up at the clouds and staring up and just realizing how big a, big a world it really is. And, you know, all the possibilities out there and you kind of lose that wonder sometimes and you feel stuck. I don't know about you, Tony Lee, but I'm sure with life coaching, most of the time, most people we come across are stuck with something. They're stuck with something. And uh, so my coaching business, I developed it on, on that principle that most people were kind of stuck in the past of some sort of limiting belief or something that's holding them back. Um, so I kind of do a, do some exercises with people in my coaching business to see what those limiting beliefs are. What are the, what are the high points of their lives? What are the things that they want to reproduce in their lives that are really high points and why aren't they doing that again? And what are the valleys? What are the things that really are holding them back? And what did they learn in both of those things that they want to carry forward into their life? So it's kind of a past, a present, you know, what are your core values? What, what's important to you now? And, and a future looking uh, life coaching business is okay. Let's start setting goals. If this is your past and you want to get rid of that or you want to add to the good things, what are you doing presently? You know, what are your core values? What's important to you? And then what do you want to do with the future? Let's set some goals and let's just follow up on those goals and make sure that you're doing it. So that's, you know, that's how I developed my life coaching business. And yeah, it's been great. It's been great watching that. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I just finished a year and a half with one of my clients. Uh, you know, a year and a half is a long time. And to see the changes that, you know, that, that client made, it really does bring a lot of joy to my life when he would come back and really take it seriously, um, you know, and, uh, and do the work to see the changes, to see the things that he was doing over a year and a half, no better feeling. Well, and that's one of the things that, that I think when we, you know, as coaches, we do work and we, we get ideas around who is our ideal client and all of that, you know, we can almost become clinical about it. And, mm -hmm. you know, clients become like, you just, just like almost without faces, but when we get to the heart of, wow, like who, who do I really want to work with and who, who can I really make a, the biggest difference for with yeah. my own experience as a coach. So what would you say, Jason, in your experience has been some of your greatest challenges crossing the threshold between somebody who's practicing and somebody who's actually out there charging and making a living yeah, sure. using your services as a coach? What are some of the greatest challenges you found? Yeah, you know, I think it's a, it's a, common, it's a common one and there's lots of books written on it uh, for coaches to try to spur them on, but I still think it's a, it's a struggle and that's marketing yourself. I think it's marketing yourself. It's putting yourself out there. What platforms do you use? How do you go about it? How much time, you know, do you, do you spend on these things? Um, definitely marketing myself and my business has been one of the, one of the greatest challenges has been one of the hardest things I think is, you know, how do you market yourself? I was, you know, one of the things about being a pastor in a small town, is I had the privilege, there was a lot of people that came back to me because they'd already met me and they'd already known we'd built some sort of rapport. And so when I opened up the business, a lot of my clients were past people that I'd had connections with, but I treated them in a different way. And it was, it was great. You know, they, they did a lot of the work. Um, and so that's how my business actually started. But I also practiced on family and friends. You know, I'd encourage people to practice on family and friends too. But, you know, the struggle still is um, the marketing. I did an open house and one day seminar and it was fantastic in a small town like this, which is like, you know, uh, about 50 people came out in a, in a two hour window, about 50 people came out to kind of check out my space, check out what I was all about. And then 20 people stayed out, stayed for, and that's all the space I had for uh, a seminar. I did, I did a one hour seminar, uh, a little workshop with them. 
and 20 people stayed for that. So that was kind of investing myself at, at that point. But the momentum from that, it was really hard to keep the momentum from that. I, I didn't do fantastic follow up with those people that came and, um, you know, I was a little over my head, I think. So marketing and then the momentum, keeping momentum going, I think is, a, is also a struggle. Um, and then always finding that motivation. But I think that's where our college helps as well is when you're with like minded people, it helps you with your motivation, it helps you spurs you on. But I think those three things are the, the three struggles that, you know, I face and probably a lot of life coaches face out there. Yeah, marketing is something that gets discussed inside of ecology in the business club. So oh. that is something that, you know, peer to peer that we do have opportunities for ecology members to get together and brainstorm, like, how do you cross the threshold and begin to put yourself out there? And what are the most effective ways to do that? Um, aside from, aside from all like stepping over your challenges and obstacles, what for you, Jason, would you say have been some of your pivotal experiences inside of ecology and the ecology community? What have been some of your favorite memories or highlights? Definitely my first triad. Definitely jumping into my first triad was, I still remember it. Like I still remember the excitement of it. I still remember the, um, you know, what is this all about? The uncertainty, but it was an exciting uncertainty. And, uh, you know, I, I remember the first triad and I was, didn't know what to expect. Um, but about 20 minutes into it, I was like, yeah, no, this is, this is really solid. This is really, really good stuff. And the thing that amazed me the most on my first triad was how open and transparent people were. And it was just the demo. And then we went into our, you know, we went into the, the triad, but even in the demo, whoever it was in the demo kind of went, went deep. Um, and then the triad, you know, somebody go deep. I was like, oh yeah, I guess I can put my feet in the water a little bit. And so in my first triad, you know, I kind of went after an issue that I didn't think I'd bring up and I did. And, but my second triad, I just went, I was like, I went for it, you know, I was like, okay, no, this is what I'm really dealing with. And it's, it's funny, you know, these people are practicing as long as you're not expecting perfection, you know, they, they did, they asked the right questions, even in the triad. This is my second triad. I really, I really uh, dove in and did the work and uh, you know, <laughs> put, put the life coach to uh, I think it might've been Ed. I think it might've been Ed. I'm not sure, but it might've been Ed Keating. That was, uh, that was there in that one, but uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So. You know, I don't think you can be an ecology member and not go to a triad with Ed. <laughs> it's true. It's so very true. Eh? Yeah. He's everywhere. Yeah, he is. He really is. So what are some of your favorite applied psychologies <laughs> to practice? Yeah, absolutely. Life coaching. It's where I landed first. And uh, I find, you know, the, the questions that are asked in life coaching are common questions. The principles are common principles that, you know, I think everybody could benefit from asking themselves those questions and walking through those principles. So life coaching to me, it was an easy transition from pastoring to life coaching, though very different, but an easy transition. And so, you know, that's one of my favorites. Uh, counseling as well, you know, the difference between life coaching and counseling. Counseling is more advice giving when you're asked. <laughs> you don't, you know, offer unsolicited advice, but, you know, counseling is more there to kind of be directional. So, you know, when, when people need some sort of direction, when they're really struggling, most of the time, you know, and I've learned this over 20 years of helping people, there's things that are above our heads. There's things that are above our levels that we have to, there are other professionals that we need to point people to. And, uh, you know, even in counseling and that stuff, I will usually counsel people to go see somebody else if they're really struggling with something that's, you know, beyond my level of helping them and uh, become very aware of my, <laughs> my limitations and uh, kind of work within that. But uh, yeah, so life coaching, counseling, and then all the cognitive, you know, all the, all the processes that go through people's minds and, you know, it's fascinating stuff, NLP and CBT. So I'm just diving into those things and, uh, you know, figuring out what makes people tick. Mm -hmm. You know, interestingly enough, um, soon to be released inside of ecology is a code of ethics course yeah. where we talk about this. We talk about Perfect. the the gut, the, where do we draw the line? And as yeah. ecologists, how do we ethically respond to somebody who is presenting as, you know, Kane Ramsey uses the word in his courses as neurotic, mm -hmm. somebody who's unable to get themselves out of the hole. 
So if somebody's, you know, fallen in the hole and they find themselves unable to get out, I mean, do we dive down in the hole and drag them out? Do we set ourselves up as heroes and send them a rope and try to get them to come up? Or do we do um, the responsible thing in my opinion? Yeah, no, and the refer word. to somebody that's better equipped because yeah, with with these applied psychologies, we're always operating under the context that we're doing what's best for the client, but we're also re- we're also operating with the presupposition that the client is responsible for their own results, and we're just here to act as a guide, as a tour guide. Yeah, yeah, for sure, and I think. That comes down to you're going to find a lot of people in crisis. So what do you do with those people? When somebody's in crisis, sometimes what they need is they don't need a life coach. They need comfort. They need you know the next level of the right the right que- the person and the right questions at the right time. So it's always good to have a reference. You know, I, I think our own little town here has a reference of the people that are psychologists, the people that are psychiatrists, the people that are counselors. They have a whole list of the helps in our community. If you, if you can find a resource like that as a life coach, definitely print that out for yourself, have it on hand, um, you know, would be, would be my advice. Mm-hmm. And these are the things that we talk about inside of ecology. So we have, yeah, absolutely, like we have events called coaches, coaching coaches. And what we do is we come together as coaches and we will discuss a case study And we'll discuss, sure, like how we can apply different modalities. But there's also a portion where um, coaches, if they are out there practicing with real clients, they can present a case in a neutral way and say, look, I've got this client. Here's what's happening. And that's when you can get feedback. And some of the feedback might be, you know, man, it sounds like you need to refer. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, exactly. so maybe it's outside of the realm of what we do. And I think it's so important to get really clear. I mean, ethically, we need to know what we provide, what services we provide and what we don't. Sure. And yeah. if we're feeling like we want to work with people who are disempowered or, or, or don't want to help themselves, that that's a different profession. That's we need to ask ourselves for what purpose do we want to do that? So, yeah, absolutely. And these are just things that we talk about and learn and and discuss and and help each other to remember and realize when we're out there practicing. So um, in terms of ecology, what else have you been up to, you know, inside the platform, even outside the platform, what's going on for you? Well, I went to coaches, coaching coaches a a few times and uh, yeah, found it really intriguing, found it really interesting. Anytime that I can get in on an event, I jump in on an event. Um, I haven't hosted a triad in a while. I did, you know, I attended, I attend as many triads as I can. Um, I, I am working in another business. I have a side gig and that side gig has uh, taken a lot of my time, which is fantastic. But uh, the side gig got really busy and um, you know, that's unfortunately taken a lot of my time, but you know, anytime that I can be in an ecology and jump in a triad, I'll jump in on a triad. Um, I'm looking at hosting some more triads again, because I really enjoy that. I really help leading other, uh, other coaches. Uh, with a, with a friend of mine here, you know, outside of ecology, we're we're kind of um, working on some projects here, which is which are great too, and it's uh, it's it's awesome. We're doing a little conference as, as well, but yeah, inside ecology triads, you know, hosting triads, coaches, coaching coaches. I've I've come in and be part of any any live events. Anytime that Kane's talking, I want to be there too because he's just full of wisdom, and you know, I, I just love to kind of just sit and hear what he has to say and what the, what the latest and greatest is. His, and I just kept shaking my head. How is he doing this? How is he going through? Yeah. And, uh, but some good stuff, some very good stuff came out of that. So it's, it's been, it's been neat. Lots of great, you know, there's lots of great events. I guess there's workshops. I haven't been able to take on a workshop yet. I think I went to one of them maybe six months ago, um, on procrastination that, uh, Tariq was, uh, Dr. Tariq was, uh, hosting and that was fantastic too. There's a lot of great professionals in ecology. There's a lot of great professionals that know what they're doing in ecology. And uh, you know, it's a, it's a great network of people. Yeah. Yeah. It really, really, really is. So, um, you know, as we uh, 
bring this conversation to a close. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> Let's, uh, I just want to know, Jason, you know, do you have any final thoughts for anybody who might be watching this or catching it on the replay? Yeah, you know, I, I think one of the biggest things is, is, is resolve and to stick with it. We all face, especially in the building up of a life coaching business practice, uh, building up of a CBT practice, whatever modality people are choosing to you know, pursue, um, you're going to hit setbacks. You're going to hit things that are complicated, things that you feel like, hey, is this, you know, is this really for me? A group like ecology is so important in that, you know, in that aspect where you're going to find like-minded people and they're going to keep you motivated. They're going to help you along the way. I've got, luckily here in town, I've got a friend that's been a life coach for 10 years. We connected about six years ago, just as a friendship level, finding somebody else as a resource, finding a partner in life coaching in your business is so important so that you don't feel like you're in it on your own. And I think ecology gives you that opportunity too. There's some, there's some great people, connections with you, connections with Ed and, you know, connections with Debbie and, you know, all the, uh, all the other staff and, and members there, um, you know, has really kept me, kept me going. So just want to, you know, just kind of really encourage people to, uh, to stick with it. Thanks, Jason. You have, um, you do have some comments and we do have people who have been out there watching. Thank you for everybody who has dropped a comment. Uh, Iris Hamill says, thanks, I needed the stick with it. So you are being heard, Jason. And truly, the I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, the heart of our community is its membership. Mm. And, you know, yes, it's important to have basics and foundations and fundamentals and academic learning and uh, understanding of grounded principles. But truly, the thing that makes ecology so, so special is the people inside of the community and Absolutely. the connections that have been forged and alliances. And uh, we've seen people being introduced to one another in a triad, and then they get to know each other. And next thing we know, they're co-hosting workshops together mm -hmm. and they're getting out there and they're actually doing business together. It's, it's such a, a fascinating, uh, it's such a fascinating community to be a part of. You are yeah. definitely, uh, you're definitely a part of the ecology community. Like we mentioned, you, you've been around since ecology first, first launched. Your favorite thing to watch ecology grow into? Yeah. I think spread its wings in all the different modalities. I think it's been really interesting, you know, the, the solidity of the schedule coming on board and, you know, making sure that things get covered. Uh, I think you guys have done a great job of that and just scheduling in, you know, these six week seminars, sessions, uh, series on, um, you know, on life coaching or on NLP or on CBT or on hypnotherapy or any of the other modalities back when it started that, that structure wasn't there. And it was kind of a little bit, you know, flying by the seat of our pants, you know, cause I was hosting at that point too. We're like, Hey, we're going to start next week jump into it next week. But now we're like six months in advance. And, you know, there's, there's, there's definitely a plan there. And, um, you know, it's actually kind of been exciting to watch that, you know, just watch the website build as well. The opportunities for people to build inside the website. Funny. You asked me, you know, what I, what I'd done in ecology, I wrote blogs, you know, early on, <laughs> I haven't done any recently, but it's a good place to practice those things. It's yeah. a safe place to practice those things. It's a life coach. It's a safe place to practice blogs. It's a safe place to practice workshops. It's a safe place to practice your gift. The, what I really love is that nobody's judgmental. Nobody's like, oh, you really, you know, you bombed there. That sucked. You know, you're, you're <laughs> terrible. You're terrible at what you do. It's always positive. It's always, you know, yeah, you always feel better coming out of it. There's always yeah. some great feedback. And uh, yeah. that's what I really appreciate. To watch it develop like that has been awesome. Yeah, well, the the triad six months in advance, that was definitely due to Ed Keating and Cosmina yeah. and Michelle really cracking the whip and hurting us cats, 
you know, as faculty that wanted to just kind of do our thing and um, truly without, without them, that structure wouldn't be here. And for just for your information, July, every month, we like to focus on a characteristic or, or a trait that's going to help a college just cross the threshold from practicing, from, from practicing into out there in the world doing it. And today, yeah. uh, this month, the theme is self-awareness. And we actually have a blog contest Oh. inside of ecology where we're challenging yeah. members to write about what self-awareness means uh, to them and you know uh, to, to do a little blog post on it the winner actually gets featured on all of our social media channels and Sweet. and all of that so for for those of you out there watching uh, and if you're in ecology go for go, it. there's been a, quite a few posts blog posts about self-awareness so awesome. um, so yeah. So Jason, thanks so much again for your time and for being who you are in the community and for what you do That's out great. there in the world. Uh, you know, I, I know a bit more about you because we're both Canadians and I think we we're connected Canadian. on that level. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I know that there are things that you're out there doing in your community that are impactful and you do make a social impact. And, you know, I know that it's not just coming in and and learning these concepts so that you can learn something cool. I, I know from, from my experience of you, you actually do take these concepts and you're using it to make a difference in a world that's meaningful and significant um, to you. So thank you so much for being in the community. For those of you out there watching, if you see Jason in a, in a triad, you know who he is now. You can reach out and say hi. If people want to get a hold of you, Jason, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, Facebook, of course. If you're watching this on Facebook, you know, please just drop a line on Facebook. Uh, you know, I'm very open to, to, to chatting with other life coaches and helping them along the way. And um, yeah, you know, my website, www.blueskyyourlife.com. You can check that out too. I'm also on Facebook under Blue Sky Your Life. And uh, ecology, you can always send me a message in ecology, you know, I get messages quite often and uh, I've made some great connections in ecology and it's been, it's been a fantastic platform to be part of. And we're grateful you're, you're here a part of it, Jason. Thanks, Thanks. so much for coming out today. Thanks, and, Tony uh, Bye for now. Take care.